We are on the border of Louisiana and Texas, about to fish one of the most incredible lakes that I've ever seen. It's a new day, a new chapter to our Cato series. Woke up, probably the earliest we've woken up all trip with the ambition to go absolutely crank them. We finally get a chance to see the sun. No rain in the horizon, no nasty weather, just 75 and sunny and five mile per hour winds. And we're gonna take full advantage of this. Although it's beautiful out, I'm a little concerned that we might lose our, our frog bite, our filthy frog bite. Regardless, it's day number three, the weather's beautiful. And we're gonna see if we can catch them. Most importantly, uh, just try to get a couple of bites today. The goal is still to catch a big one, like a six, seven pound plus largemouth. The sun might actually be against us today. Wow. Very confused. That was it. There we go. Got one. <laughs> Let's get a little nervous. Just fished uh, for about 30, 40 minutes without a single sniff and I was thinking maybe they just shut off. I mean, we had a tornado warning that ran through here yesterday. The weather was really bad and we're also doing post storm front conditions. So we've had two days straight of overcast all of a sudden now it's sunny. So I was concerned these fish were a bit shell shocked. That confirms they are not. We finally got one. First fish today. Hopefully you're, you're number one of 30. And I hope you're also the smallest fish too. That's a large one. Oh, there we go. Got the skunk out of the boat. Skunk is out of the boat. That feels good. You know, it's it's scary when you're on a really good bite and as you progress throughout the trip, you're like, is it gonna get better? Is it gonna get worse? This is a scenario in which I'm kind of concerned it might get worse. You know, we ran this stretch yesterday pretty hard, but I wanted to come back because I missed a lot of fish and there was so much we didn't even touch. Basically picking up from where we left off yesterday because we only got about two hours of fishing in. Okay, one. Got some, got some meat on her bones. Oh my God, how does a fish eat a frog that good? That's so impressive. Okay, well, I had my doubts this morning. I thought we weren't gonna get them on the frog because these aren't the best frogging conditions, but these past two fish have felt otherwise. Wow, long fish, long and lean. Nice post of honor. <laughs> Still catching them. Let's go, fish number two. We're working it, we're working it. That was off the tree a bit too, which makes it feel really good. Really, really good. Isolated trees, isolated trees. I was be recording for that. I'm so glad I had composed myself. <laughs> that was really bad. I'm trying to get back into this little little back lake right now. Literally just a couple feet off the main bayou, I, I took a right. And I, I kind of thought about just ripping down here because it is on the map. And this is a pretty straightforward way to get to the pond. And I'm so glad I did it because I was idling down there and I just got stopped by a log. Like if I was going anything above five miles per hour, we probably would have broken something. I honestly don't even know if I, I mean, that was, <laughs> I went like this and we weren't even going that fast. I don't even know where the log's at. I guess it's that right there. Yeah, it's probably that. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to get back here, but we gotta try anyway. Oh. Huh. I don't know if we'll be able to go any farther. And that's exactly why we're gonna go farther. Okay. This interests me. 
what really interests me. There's a huge log right here. I don't think we'll be able to make it. But... Ain't no way. Ain't no way we're making this. Going down this little chute, trying to get to the back, the back pond, the back water, and uh, we got stuck. Can't go any further. I have to find a different route. It kind of pisses me off though, because every time I find an area like this, I'm like, okay, I have to get back there because if my boat can't can't get back here and can barely almost fit, then I know a lot of other boats are experiencing the same thing. Which means, just beyond me, probably doesn't get fished that much, unless you're like in a little 16 foot jumbo. But we're quite literally wedged. Like she's not going anywhere. There's just a big lay down that stretches across the canal and it's keeping us from going any further, which sucks. Which really sucks. But we'll figure we'll figure a way out. I don't know. I really want to go over there. That's that's close. We almost weren't gonna make it, but we did. This is a this is something that I think everyone should have in their boat. If you, even if you have a small boat that's you know able to get back into skinny water, grab a little push pull. This is just an eight foot pole that I use for uh, kayak fishing. But I brought it with me this trip because I knew we'd be doing stuff like this. Without this, we would have not have gotten through that little neck down. <laughs> I can't believe this, this is crazy. All right, well, we might be the first big boat to be back here in quite some time. Nuts, dude, look at that giant tree. Just, that's literally what's blocking us, or what was blocking us, but we got over it. All right, well, hopefully it was worth it. <laughs> it looks good back here, at least. Supposedly, I was reading this fact last night, on, uh, on the website, Texas Parks and Wildlife has a write-up on this lake, and apparently 95% of this lake is covered by like vegetation, trees, foliage, something. Which means that 5% of the water is like open, I guess? It's just a weird statistic. And I guess when you see stuff like this, it's like, yeah, no, I could actually believe that. It's gonna be kind of interesting getting over these hyacinths or whatever these are. What is this, just pond weed or something? But once we do, I think we'll be in business. Frog, see him? It's cool. Oh, that was one. Huh, all right. Duly noted, love to see it. That felt pretty heavy, honestly. Not much of a bite though. That was cool. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I don't know even bother. This is quite the mess. I just set the hook too hard. I thought it was a good one, honestly. And I set the hook and out comes this little squeaky. Fish number three. Wow. I swear to God, I thought it was a five pounder. That's why I set the hook for the hills. Not much back here in this second spot. But we had to check it out, it looked good on paper. All we have to show is this guy for it. All that bushwhacking for you. Really? Yeah, I still love you. Get down there, stinky. Yeah, that was a nice bite at least. It almost seems like all of these ponds are different. Like we've ventured into, I think four ponds so far and each one has a different water clarity, different type of grass, different layout with the cypresses. Like some will be scattered, others will have like a, in a, be in a perfect line. Others will just only have them on the bank. This one in particular, this pond they're fishing right now, which by the way, it took quite some time to get back here. Uh, the water's dirty, which isn't great. There's also a lot of surface vegetation, like emergent vegetation, which makes it hard to navigate. So this is kind of all we're allowed to fish. And although it's got the right kind of cypresses, like these isolated cypresses, there just doesn't seem to be too much on them. So I don't know, probably gonna take a few more casts then dip on out of here and go find something fresh because this ain't it. Oh, there's one right there. Find it, if you find it, it's done. Good one, good one. That was so sick, that was so sick. Whew, I'm so confused, like they're still eating. Like they have not stopped eating. I don't know, maybe I just haven't found them yet. Filthy frog, 
gone. Absolutely gone. Decent little fish. I saw him chase, uh, chase some bait right out here in the open water. Of course, I fished like 20 cypress trees just now. Not a single bite. This guy comes open water. Big head, little body. Nice post water. Thanks, brother. That, uh, that woke me up. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh. Fast forward a couple of hours. We're back at Camp Caddo. Today was rough. I think, uh, I think the sun and the lack of, it's crazy, I'm even saying this, the lack of rain and overcast actually hurt us today. We only caught, I think, maybe four bass opposed to our 27 the first day here. It's weird, that weird weather change can have the fish feeling a little bit funky. Actually, today was the most mileage we probably covered. We did maybe, I think, close to 15 miles, 20 miles in the boat. And uh, we have pretty much nothing to show for it. So, and get ready for our last and final day here in Caddo. We're actually gonna go on the Louisiana side and see what that looks like. I've heard it's generally a better place to catch big fish and it just looks a little bit different over there. It's not as, I don't know, it's not as windy. It's not necessarily like a, a creek system or, or, you know, a creek that leads into a big lake system. It's mainly just a giant lake over there. There's still cypress trees, but it should fish a little bit better. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Good morning, wieners. This is the last and final day of our Caddo series. Boat's out of the water. The gate plan is this. We're actually gonna pick up the trailer and move on over to the Louisiana side. We could, in theory, rip the Lund all the way there, but I got three quarters of a tank and it is very, very far. I figured we'd take the boat out, go launch at a different ramp and fish in fresh water. That's the whole point, just trying some new. Actually, funny thing, Caleb was taking the trailer and meeting me at the ramp while I drove the boat and I already caught three bass. One of which was a spot. Here's a picture of it. Pretty weird. Anyway, uh, big bass, that's, what, that's what's on the mind. Let's end strong on a high note and let's dominate cattle on our very final day in this series. We're out here, we're doing this. Go get them. This is different. This is like the main lake. This is what you consider true cattle lake. What we were fishing prior was a bunch of chutes and creeks and stuff that veer off into the woods. But this, this is what you would consider cattle. Much more wide. It's a little bit easier to run out here, although I'm still going to be very careful. And I think it, I think it could be good. You know, I mean, you still have cypresses. You still got docks. You still got a bit of current in some areas. Hopefully, they're they're sticking around this overcast today because. Uh, it really worked well for us. What was that, two days ago, three days ago? Yeah, first two days. Yeah, first two days. All right, wish us luck, fingers crossed. Fish. That's a pretty good one too. Hammered it. So weird. I'm so, I've fished probably 100 cypress trees today. For whatever reason, that one had a fish on it, like a really hungry fish on it. <sighs> Not a good start. Dude, I'm about to break my rod. God, I'm not even like missing the hook set. I'm I'm hooking them, and they're just coming off. Oh, come on, can't end on a sour note. Day number four, day number three. I don't even know what day it is. All I know is I'm getting my ass kicked right now. We might have to pick this up and and uh, go back to where we were. You know, we've actually got really good conditions for a bite we previously found on day one. So. I'm gonna give us a few more minutes. If I keep getting bites, I'll stay around here. That is two bites in 10 minutes, so it's pretty decent. Um, but if this slows down another 50 yards, boom, we're off. We're gonna go back to the Texas side. Texas is way more generous than Louisiana's right now. I uh, just gotta keep uh, keep on our toes. 
Don't leave fish to find fish. Big brain energy. Is this a f joke, dude? That was a good one, too. I waited. That was a perfect cast, man. Perfect eat, perfect cast. Somehow I still lost it. Man, it's just frustrating. We're out of here. I don't know if this is the right call, but I also don't feel like beating the dead horse back here is, is the move either. Yeah, it's just strange, dude. We started off so strong on this trip. Thought I had him figured out. It's a tough lake to fish. You know, everything looks the same. And because everything looks the same, you're very tempted to fish the same. But even though we were catching them on frogs in, in one pond earlier, they may be biting something completely different in another pond, even though it sets up the same. You gotta take in consideration that even though the water clarity is the same and you've got big cypress trees, what, what's down there below might be different. It could be a different type of vegetation. It could be sand instead of silt. I don't know, don't wanna get too technical. If I overthink it, my head will explode. But we're gonna have the water. We're gonna head back to the Texas side, kind of towards home and uh, fish and confidence stuff. Thank you. We're back in Texas. Louisiana kind of kicked our ass. Let's see if this is worth it. There are so many freaking boats out today. When we first started this series, we were the only trailer out the ramp. Now there's 20 or 30. It's not even a weekend. Is it Friday? Or is it the weekend? I'm just an idiot. That's a, it's a Friday. I don't know, but hopefully this is better. We're going to start off by fishing the main river channel, the main bayou channel, which we have not done this trip. When uh, Caleb was getting the trailer and I was just waiting for him, I caught like three fish, like right here. So we're going to give this a quick run, see if maybe we can get some, just kind of toss around these docks. I haven't fished docks this whole trip just because I figured that wasn't a program, but honestly, it might be worth a shot. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look what the map says. Oh, the map says you are going to catch a 10-pounder. Cool, nice. Let's try something a little different. Let's start with the topper. Start off a little popper, a little blooper. And he said it was too cold for gators. Was there a bunch of car guys this morning? Yeah, not a single one. Apparently they're really good to eat. There we go. Oh, it was a pickerel, damn. That would have been the first on the trip. I've actually never wanted to catch one, but that would have been kind of cool. We could have added a species to the list. Oh my God. That's gotta be a joke, right? Was that bass? Look good, whatever it was. It looked like a nice fish. Well, whatever, you don't want a worm. Oh, here we go. Ready? Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. 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 How big was that? I don't want to tell you. That was like an eight, eight, seven or eight pounder. I made such a bad cast. I was over the tree and he ate it over the tree. I'm actually pissed. Dude, that was such a big fish. Oh my God. I went bam a bass mode on that, but I couldn't seal the deal. That thing was huge. I've not, by the way, guys, I've not landed a single fish on camera today. I just lost the biggest fish of the trip. Like probably one of my biggest bass on a frog ever, period. I don't know. If I lose another fish, I'm gonna snap this rod over my leg. This is insane. I've lost literally every single bite today. Every single bite. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick someone's ass. I'm gonna beat the out of you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. Guess what? I don't know anymore. That's number six. I'm 0 for 6 now, guys. 0 for 6. 
0 for 6. Not like 2 for 6. 0 for 6. I have not caught a single fish today. I could have potentially just had the biggest bass the trip, dumped him, because why not? Sure, let's do that. And um, haven't gotten any little ones previously. I mean, we made the right decision to come to Texas. There's clearly some bitey fish over here. I just can't uh, seal a deal. Oh, I just got another little bite, probably a bluegill or something. This smile is fake, by the way. It's not a real smile. I'm just trying not to blow a blood vessel on my forehead. Dude! What is going on right now? Another big fish. Same exact eat as the last one. Wow, finally, I got seeds in my mouth, hang on. Got a lot of seeds in my mouth. <laughs> there we have it, first fish of the day. I swear to God, I was getting bites. My last bite was probably about an eight pounder, and then uh, of course I lost him, but the little one pounder, oh, he for sure was going in the boat. Uh, nonetheless, first official fish of the day. That's so fat, look how fat he is, look at this guy. This guy's got, this guy's got a gut. I love it. This little Ellen Bizzle. Fished this little hidden secret cut pretty thoroughly. Had maybe, I think, four bites. Missed just about every single one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. At least we're getting bites. I'd rather be missing fish than not missing fish at all. We're going to head back to the main river and uh, see if we can't get hit by a, I don't know, a speedboat or something. <laughs> <laughs> we found a snake and... I'm just, I know as soon as I get up on that deck, he's gonna come up there with me. <laughs> you see him? No. We found a snake and we, um, we got some cool shots of him. Got some sweet video and then we put him back. But I don't know, I think he's still on. <laughs> he's on the boat somewhere. He has to be, dude. He has to be on the boat somewhere. So we located the snake. No, shh, dude. Y'all be careful when you're out here. <laughs> like, seriously, be well, careful. Well, okay. The past what three four days we haven't seen we haven't seen anything. a single snake single alligator you guys can't see this there is a snake there. there is a snake down here okay he's not he's not getting the memo oh yeah there he goes look at that he did not like you doing that he's really close to coming in the boat too which i'm not too keen on like he's already I in i think he's gone no he's not oh, no he's in the boat <laughs> he's in the boat <laughs> all right you might have to just give him a little fling okay buddy just give him a little Show him what's right, up. No, he's, good. he's good. All right. <laughs> Dude, how the f did we get a snake in our boat? <laughs> you got a snake in your boat. You got a snake in your boat. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a John D video. I like look over to my right. I'm like, what? What is that? <laughs> oh, this? This right here. If a boat comes through right now, I'm going to lose my fingers. Holy hell. It's spooled. Yeah, is it completely spooled? Yeah, I can see the reel. <laughs> can I not reel it in either? Look at all that line. Look at all that line gone. Good thing we're not doing crappie fishing. Nope, man, we're about to hit this person's dock. Sorry about that in advance. We have a beautiful dock. <sighs> last cast. Last cast on Caddo. I'm going to savor this. I'm going to try not to get hit by this boat, too. I thought he was gonna kill me. What's up, What's up, buddy? All right, well, that cast didn't produce a fish, but you know what it produced, Caleb? What? Memories. A good series and an epic time on probably one of my new favorite lakes ever. We will meet y'all back at the ramp. Well, wieners, I suppose this is the part where we say goodbye and bid farewell to all you beautiful viewers and anglers out there who tuned in to get another one of these series. It has been almost two years since we filmed something like this. And I don't want to let that happen again. This was incredible. I will never forget this trip, and this is something that I will never take for granted as well. I know a lot of you who are watching at home get to see moments like this and kind of experience what it's like to fish a lake like Caddo through the videos and just through watching. And I hope and I pray that you guys get the opportunity to fulfill a dream trip of your own. But yeah, no, we definitely got humbled today. But I think if you take the trip overall and just the experience and all the other stuff that happened outside of the bass boat, 
It was perfect. We ate good food. We got to do a bit of night fishing. We had fun. We made laughs. We catch. We caught fish. We met Rackley and Rob out in the water. There was so much that happened, and to do it right here is, uh, I think, just kind of the cherry on the on the whole bass fishing trip cake. Now, for the million dollar question, where are we fishing next? We've already fished two very legendary Texas fisheries, which is great, but the United States is full of amazing places to explore and film epic content. So drop a comment below, let us know, and we will make it happen. Like I said, thank you guys for joining us on this journey, and uh, I hope to film another one of these very soon. As always, wieners, keep fishing, never stop.